Fira generated by the award of oil pipeline protection contracts to an individual or a private company is getting louder. The governor of Ondo State, Rotimi Akeridulu, has lent his voice to the frenzy by condemning the decision of the federal government to award such contracts to a private security company. In a statement signed by his chief press secretary, Richard Olatunde, the governor queried the propriety of allowing some persons to bear arms while denying the same privilege to state with joint security outfits like the Amotekun Corps. So this particular issue is generating a lot of noise, especially on social media. Governor Akira <laughs> is not the only one expressing his um, displeasure. Many groups have also called for inclusion in this whopping uh, 4 billion naira deal. <laughs> I saw a TV journalist go to meet some people that call themselves the creek men mm -hmm. or so. And they made it very clear that how could somebody, be, because this Nega Delta stretches to Undo State. Mm -hmm. So who is going to look after the interest? When we are talking about state policing, mm -hmm. and I think that is where the argument of the governor of um, Undo State comes in. I'm not too sure, he's, I read his statement, I'm not too sure he's, he's really faulting the idea of um, giving the contract to somebody. His worries or his concern is we state governments establish a motecum. We ask for arms, permission to, to arm carry them. Arms. You say no. Then a private security company, if you like, you allow mm -hmm. them to carry arms. Something is going on. And then he came, comes with the argument that the security architecture of this country, there's something, Wrong. the logic is mm -hmm. not just. Uh, and I think I, I agree with him entirely, you know. But if um, that the logic of this creek men also, I agree with it. Listen, if this is where we are with this Ikosi, right? And there's a pipeline passing through Ikosi. Who better to watch take the pipeline. than the people <laughs> of this community? So strike the thing. Let, if you are going to sign 2,000 or 4,000 um, contract agreement, let, let's go ahead and do it so that everybody has a stake in, uh, in the, uh, yes. Listen, oh. um, the chief of Naval staff, I was watching his um, interview with um, one of these channels or so, Akere Dudu Ali, and he was saying that these people just come and just break those things up, and nobody does anything about it. No, no anything about it. Sorry, rather it's the MD of, um, Within a 200 mile stretch, mm -hmm. there are 295 uh, breakages. That tells you how <laughs> rampant this thing is. So, if it passes through our community and we have this money to look after it, if you mess up, you go to your father or to your mother and say, Tell your son he's messing around, messing around with her, with, um, you know, and we are working and we are getting paid anyway. All right. Mr. Abatman, is this a good deal? Well, I think, you know, you know, you know our problem as a country, our problem is that fundamentally we, are, we run an ad hoc system. Mm. Ad hoc, I mean, you just devise a particular solution to, a, to, to a, something that should have been a long-term solution. You see, people have been talking about multi-level policing in Nigeria. I don't call this state policing. Mm. Multi-level. You have uh, police at the communal level, you have it at the local government level, you have it at the state level. Those are the communal level. I could remember when I was very, very young. Whenever there was any incident of uh, burglary, I never experienced armed robbery as a very young man. The kind of local police, they know the kind of people who did that particular thing. So until we break down our security and policing system to the grassroots, we are not like we continue to have in ad hoc. Remember, you see, it will appear, I don't want to say people in government are not thinking, but I think it is something like that. During the twilight of the administration of uh, former President Gulo Jonathan, he gave the same contract to Tompolo and OPC. Mm -hmm. I can remember very I well. Remember, yeah. Then you now see, when you now see the essence of that contract, you see that it was a particular, for a strategic end, not to solve the problem of oil theft in Nigeria. To win the election. Mm -hmm. And what is the strategic end? Probably to rob the back of those people so that the militants too can mm -hmm. rob the back of mm -hmm. government for a particular goal, not for a long-term goal. So the essence now is that if you cannot allow a moteko that are closer to carry arms, why are you now on a temporary basis allowing other non-state actors that are not even regulated to police the waters? So the question now is that 
We like ad hoc thing in Nigeria instead of go to the fundamental basis and solve this problem. And we cannot solve the problem except there is multi-layer policing from the world level yeah. to local government. To, it's not about state policing. It has to be, it has to run through. That was why in those days it is very easy if any crime is committed in any particular community, I can still remember, they will get to the root of, the, of it. Because you'll be posted as a police officer, you'll be posted to your local government. If you like, organize people to come and rob your people. <laughs> they will know the kind, the, 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 where you come from. Yes, it is true, because they will just, in fact, before mm -hmm. you are recruited, yeah. even into the native police. I can remember my, those who taught me in primary school, most of my teachers, whenever we close school by 4 o'clock in the morning, you will see them in short. Mm. They are communal police officers. They don't even carry arms. But when you see them, you will get fear. So the problem is that instead of creating everything ad hoc, ad hoc, because I know this place is also ad hoc. Absolutely. If another mm -hmm. president comes in February, he will cancel them. When election is coming again, he will give them contract. Mm -hmm. So we like ad hoc system in Nigeria. And that is why we are moving in the same circle. All right, gentlemen, let's look at the sad reality of this um, issue. But is, this a, is this passing a vote of no confidence on the entire armed forces of Nigeria and also the Navy? Because people have called this shameful. You see, in Venezuela, mm. a division is of the army actually is dedicated to looking after the pipelines. Some people have suggested that, and some people have pretended as if it's not a good idea. And then when you look at what is happening, you recall a few years ago, a very senior naval officer was fired or something. Yes. A few years ago, because of complicit. Yes. Which the, because of yeah, it was complicit with these. Um, let's give it the, the right word, bunkering. Mm. Do you understand? You know. So, who do you trust? Please, let's go back to the roots. Let's go back to the community. Somebody has just suggested multi-layered police. Let's have it. What is what can be wrong with it? If people of a particular community are engaged to look after the pipeline, in the, they themselves and their traditional ruler will be in trouble if anything goes wrong. I think Do you understand. So, um, why would you bring somebody from Zungiru, for example, to come and to go and manage um, the creeks? Do, can he even handle the, 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 the environment to start with? Does he even know the environment to start with? And then secondly, that is water. That's a dangerous thing for him. He's coming from the desert area or something, and you want him to come and police... To police uh, to, an area that's not known that do, 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 you, I saw the, video, the footage of this, the, the TV journalist who went into those creeks. Going it, you could see he was terrified, even though he's from that, he's yeah, an enjoy himself. Yeah. He was scared. I could see that. When they started talking, he, he had to find a nice way to, to land to get. He could, he could have been shot yeah. in that place. So please, uh, I think, let's leave the police and the whatever. If we can have a multi-layered uh, arrangement, as he has said, to involve the communities. I, let's advocate for this. Let's involve the communities. Yeah, but in this case, people have said this was a man who was declared wanted in 2016 and now is, is a government contractor. Remember I said something the other time. Mm. Government adopts policy that suits <laughs> their strategic interest at any point in time. Strategically, for those people there, I won't say it is politics. But what I'm telling you is that they, <laughs> he already said. they gave him the job for strategic mm. interest. <laughs> but probably in the next six months, they want to use him, they want him to calm nerves. Probably there's a policy that is coming that could cause crisis or that could ignite those people from that area. So when you throw the, you know, cut, I mean, when you throw the carrot. Thing, bait, carrot into the dog, you know how to do it. So this contract was done for strategic reasons. All right, the, the, Greek, uh, the Greek guys have said this is calling for war. How much does the, does the government look out for, for this and solve these this tantrums? <sighs> well, by list, what is the government anyway? Government, you are not just to maintain the state. You are supposed to service mm. the people of the country. And what do you do? The Constitution says, Section 40 of the Constitution says, security and the welfare of the people. Indeed, it mentions security before talking about welfare, mm. meaning that security is job number one of government. Government should face the security. All right, Mr. Batten, elastic. Well, I, I, I think uh, we should have a holistic approach to security. Security, uh, the matter that somebody is carrying arms, 
does not mean he has guaranteed the security of that area. Let the people have a means of livelihood. Let the people be free to earn a decent living. That is where you guarantee security. Mere carrying arms does not make that people will not commit crime. They will. Let, they have, let, let us do something about this, our economy. Let us make sure that people who are able-bodied will not have any excuse mm. to committing crime. All right.